Hi there, and welcome back to 30 Days of Prayer for Our Children. We are now on day 24, if you can believe it. And we are talking about different prayers for our kids in relationship to others. So today we're going to be praying that our children will have compassion for the loss. And it seems like that would be kind of a basic, easy thing. But I feel like in today's world, where everything is me focused, our lives are busier than ever. We have distractions like crazy. Even when you have downtime, you've got a device probably nearby. If, if you don't have a phone in your hand, there are iPads and handheld devices all over the place, televisions, whatever, to distract our attention and keep us kind of immersed in information overload. And so there's very little time for outward reflection. Um, and so I think that it's more important than ever that we pray that our children would have compassion for the lost. I think there, this day and age, there's a lot of divisiveness also. And I don't think people are more divisive than before, but there are more avenues to engage with people. And those avenues tend to be virtual. So you're not looking face to face and seeing a human in front of you. You're seeing a comment. And, and, and it could rub you the wrong way. And it might not even have been if you're on social media or if you're receiving a text or an email, you may not even be reading it the way that it was intended, but the way that you respond to it, you might read it in a negative way. And then you respond negatively because you're not saying it to a person's face, you're typing it out, which gives us boldness, particularly if we don't personally know that person and have to pass them in the hallways or see them as we're leaving our home. So I think all of these things work together to keep us from having a tender heart toward others. And not just, we don't just want our kids to have a tender heart and to be kind to others and to, to love others, but to actually have compassion for the lost. That even takes it a step further. And that takes even more outward attention. And it takes even more um empathy, the ability to see things from someone else's perspective, because I believe, especially for our kids that are raised in the church, having compassion for people that have never known the truth or holding those people to the same standards that you would hold someone that knows the truth might be difficult. It might be easy to point fingers and it might be easy to feel superior or like, I know the truth and you don't. And even within Christian circles, we have these theological debates that can get so ugly and totally miss the point of the unity that Christ wanted us to have. So even more so, we want them to have compassion for those that don't know Jesus. In Matthew 9, 35 and 36, it says, Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Jesus saw the crowds and he had compassion on them as a whole because he knew that they were like sheep without a shepherd, that they didn't know the truth. I think the same thing goes for individuals that, you know, you, he, he saw each person for who they were and knew that they were lost and wanted to meet with them. So I just want to pray today that our children will just have this desire for others that don't know Jesus to meet with him and for them to be the vessels sometimes through which that happens. So let's pray today for our children to have compassion for the lost. Father God, you are the author of compassion. You show us by example. You have no reason to have mercy on us. Jesus had no reason to take compassion on these people that didn't know the truth, some of whom were in direct opposition to who he was. But he saw them as helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Father, we pray for our children today. We lift them up to you in this crazy world full of distractions full of divisiveness, lacking in personal connection. And we pray, God, that you would overcome those obstacles 
to our children, seeing people for who they are and for what they are. We pray that you would just plant in them a compassion for the loss, that you would shift their mindset, God, that you would be just transforming them to be able to see people through different glasses, through your glasses, that they would be able to pick up on the deep needs of the people around them. Lord, that they would see that that they're not in direct opposition to you in a way that would make them feel antagonistic, but that they would say see that they were in deep in direct opposition to you because they're lost, because they're being blinded by the enemy, that they would be able to see the real enemy, God, to see people for who they are and what they are in your eyes. Harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd, harassed by the enemy, helpless without a rescuer, with no one to be yoked with to guide them. God, I just pray that that heart of having compassion for the lost would launch them into action, that it wouldn't be a passive compassion, but that it would be an active compassion. Father, that they would be the hands and feet of Jesus in a world that so desperately needs them. God, we just pray your protection over them, that they would be shrewd as serpents and innocent as doves, that they would be able to know and rightly discern how and when to get involved in the lives of others and when to stand still and stand back and allow you to work while they wait. Father, we just thank you so much that we love because you first loved us, that we can have compassion because you first had compassion on us. God, what a gift. Bless our children today, God, and just begin that process of softening their hearts and shifting their view to be more in line with your own. In Jesus' name, amen.